So I had all sorts of plans to do stuff outside this week, but it's gonna be raining all week. So uh, let's open a package. Here we have it, the upgraded Fabu Burn. Well, I shouldn't say upgraded. It's uh, it's not complete, and it's not complete because, for some reason, it's not functioning properly. After putting these new parts on, we've got real quickly a Railgasm kit that uh, Captain Slug sent me, and then I purchased uh, the new back plate, the aluminum ramrod, and. Uh, believe this middle piece right here um, pieces I've all I've been wanting to get because I wanted both more rail space I want to be able to quickly change springs um, I wanted the the upgrade in performance and I've really been waiting to, to do these things and Captain Slug uh, asked if I had or had an interest in this railgasm kit and I said yeah I would love to take a look at it because I want some place to put my camera and sights and all that stuff when I'm playing which this allows me to do that being said, let's talk about why it's not performing properly. Um, some of the tolerances, I think, on some of these pieces aren't right or aren't fitting properly for some reason. It's important to note that I, I am trying to take this from a revision one, which is the pre-100 model, to pieces that are after that. And I assume they all should be interchangeable and, and swappable and, and made to work together. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to have to sh send Captain Slug a message to find out. Uh, but there's gaps all over the place. Uh, you can actually hear I'm moving the plunger tube back and forth. It's not, it's not fit in there. And there's no extra... I can't push this forward anymore. All the pieces are all shoved as far as they can go. Um, I just, I don't know what exactly is. I'm gonna have to take this all apart again and try and sort it out. So this is part, we're gonna call this part one of the upgrade of the Fabu Burn because I'm gonna have to figure out what exactly needs to be addressed. So notice the, the rods here have play as well. So things just aren't lining up properly and I think uh, I, I don't know if I messed something up on my end when putting these in. Granted, I haven't been feeling 100% the last couple of days, so it's entirely possible I screwed something up. But I wanted to share the process with you um, and some initial thoughts just on certain components, namely the Railgasm kit. Um, I can't universally recommend this. Uh, there's... there's uh, couple reasons well maybe one one big reason i love all this rail space i love this and it looks cool uh so those those are the pluses like i absolutely love having all this options up here for various accessories cameras optics all that kinds of stuff love it i think it looks cool like i said two good things negative for me i liked being able to grip all the way around the handle or the, the the pump here i can't do that with the railgasm kit I, I have to adjust and go more towards this kind of a grip without my thumb on top where i don't feel like i have as much leverage which when you're using a lower spring load isn't that big of an issue but when you're trying to push you know the the k26 and you're you're priming it 
dozens upon dozens upon dozens of times throughout the, the course of a day of games, it's a little bit more fatiguing. It's not the end of the world, but it's a minor kind of preference change for me. Um, also, you then you, you get the 3D printed on 3D printed kind of uh, sound, which is not not the most appealing. Uh, it, it's it's not the end of the world, but it's something that definitely is a bit of a deterrent for me from this. It's not a bad not a bad kit. I don't think it's something I should say don't buy 100%, but it's also a not a must to buy 100% for me. This is one of those pieces where you're going to have to decide for yourself if the trade-offs are worth it. If you're using a like a an angle foregrip or a vertical foregrip on the Picatinny down here for your your pump, then this yeah, no problem for adding this up here. Uh, the only down, downside you may experience is that that sound of the 3D printing on 3D printing. Otherwise, you're not going to run into that issue that I have, like trying to prime like this and, you know, uh, being uncomfortable sliding your thumb across the top of rails. But it's a trade-off for rail space. Uh, enough about that. Just to, to show you that the thing isn't sealed properly, any, any seal at all, uh, it's primed, thumb over the... I mean, it didn't hold anything. It just came right out. Um, so yeah, the parts I'm going to have to try and figure out. I spent a lot of time, like this This looked like it was going to be a 20, maybe 30 minutes tops for my slow, uh, slow pace to, to interchange all these parts and finish the upgrade and get everything back up and running. And I was on track for that and then I realized uh, certain pieces weren't fitting properly or the, the threaded rods weren't going through the spreader right here um, and I had to sp spend a fair amount of time sanding that out to get it to go through um, and as well this kind of dark guide piece doesn't seem to seat properly with the spreader uh, I don't know if that's causing some of the issues here you'll notice there's a gap right here between this back Picatinny rail and the the spreader here but I can't um, I, I can't push things forward anymore. Uh, even if this piece does go flush, then there'll be a gap back here, and there's no space, you'll notice here, there's, there's no space for that to move forward. This is all flush. So there's something not seated properly somewhere, and like I said, I'm gonna have to take this all apart and get uh get a better idea of what exactly is going on i'll probably get in contact with captain slug figure it out uh and then get back to you with a part two on this at some point in the future but i did want to share my thoughts on especially the railgasm kit uh because it is interesting and i think it is a kit that depending on your preferences or your priorities may be worth picking up uh whether you if you want aesthetics that looks cool when you want rail space and you're planning on using a uh, a grip assist or a prime assist down here, whether vertical or angled, definitely worth looking into. Um, I like this piece back here. I like the the quick change. Plus, this is like has some wobble to it too. So I just I, this is one of the things about the Caliburn as a platform. I love it, but you constantly have to tinker with it. You constantly have to figure out what little thing is going uh, one way or the other. And if you have pieces 3D printed from different printers or different printers with different tolerances, you're potentially going to run into issues of things not uh, fitting quite properly and you're going to need to do a little bit of work to get that to sit properly and function the way it's supposed to. Uh, but it's just something you got to take into account with a fully 3D printed blaster that is very, very uh, customizable friendly in terms of changing out springs and doing different things here and there with it, getting the performance you want out of it. But regardless, just wanted to give you my initial thoughts on this. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, do you like the look versus the function of the Railgasm kit? Do you like being able to quick change your springs and stuff like that? Uh, what do you think I did wrong? Do you think this is on mine? Do you think this is something with the 3D printed parts? Or do you think it's trying to combine revision two parts with revision one parts? Uh, let me know in the comments down below and we will 
pick this back up in the future for a part two where we actually get this back up and running the way it's meant to be. So if you're new to the channel and enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.